welcome to Code Rush Feature of the Week. What have we got this week, Mark? Rory, I'm going to show you template name variables. Okay. And before we go in, I wanted to just point out, we received an email from one of our customers, and the email says, hey, I wanted to ask for a new default template for methods. I want to press MAR and get uh, a method that returns an action result. And this customer says he uses them a lot, and it would be super cool to have those for some uh, MVC uh, high-speed coding. So let's talk about how we can do that. We want to use AR to give us an action result. Sure. That's what we want to do. Now, the CodeRush templates come with a lot of, uh, there are a lot of templates for creating structural parts of code, such as methods, for example, or properties, or variables. And all of these templates work with template name variables. In CodeRush Classic, we called these dynamic lists. And these temp template name variables uh, allow you to create these combinations of structural, uh, the structural shortcuts with the type shortcuts. So my structural shortcut might be the letter M because I want to create a method. And my type shortcut might be AR because I want an action result, right? So to do that, I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to say, hey, let's go into the code templates. And I'm doing that just because I want the, the um, to quickly get out to this page not because I want to modify anything on this page, but because I want to get to the page right next to it, the template name variables. Okay. Now, when I get up here, it looks uh, pretty stark. There's just a few things inside of here. And the reason why is because uh, the language C-sharp is selected here. I want to change to a neutral language. The reason why is because the template name variables are the same regardless of what language, programming language you're working with for the .NET types because those .NET types are the same names, regardless of what programming language you're working with. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. So just to give you a clue, you know, just to give you a sense of what's out here, uh, we've got numbers, we've got uh, things for generic types, uh, pieces for entity framework in here, binary operators, things like this. And these are used in various templates so that we don't have to create thousands of very specific templates. Instead, we just create a very simple structural template and we can combine it with one or more of these template name variables. Sure, some of our viewers will have seen us demonstrate this kind of stuff in, in the past where we'd make properties that return an int and methods that return an int or indeed parameters that are of type int. That comes from the use of the, the i that then maps to int 32. Exactly, in fact, if I scroll down here, you'll see i and it, there's the map to system.int32. There we go. Now, if we just jump over here into templates for a second, Rory said property that returns an int. So if I type in PI right here, it'll come in and it'll find, let me maximize this so we can see this. It'll find, notice it's not finding any template called PI, but it does is smart enough to know, this search engine is smart enough to know that the letter I is also inside our template name variables. Sure. And that it maps over, we go back over to the template name variables, we jump back over here to neutral again, and we go, drop down there to the I right here. This, this template name variable, I, is in, matches to a variable name called type. And that variable name called type is what you see right here inside the question marks in all of these templates. So the search facility here in the templates is actually clever enough not just to be searching name, but effectively to search effect. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Or, or expansion. So I essentially type in my expansion or the, the template I would like to type out in the editor, mm -hmm. and it will find the structural piece that gives that to me. Excellent. Now that I have it, I'm here. I can drill into this. This is just a link to another one. I'm holding the control key down, drilling in. Now you can start to see what this is going to look like when it expands. I actually have a couple different ones for creating read write properties, that sort of thing depending on context. The context here, you can see how it changes as I move up and down. Yeah. In fact, this can really show the power of, of the, the dynamic type uh, anyway, because effectively all of those different expansions would need to be repeated for each and every type if we didn't have this facility. Yes, exactly. There would be hundreds of thousands of templates, but instead we can give you the equivalent of hundreds of thousands of combos, template shortcut combos, uh, with very few templates that are out there. And so I'm just uh, was drilling into property type here to take a look at what that is. And uh, ultimately we get down to this bit of code here, which basically says, hey, get the type. 
And what this is, there's the variable again, right? That type variable. And what it's gonna do now, this bit of code right here is gonna come in and it's gonna say, well, the customer typed in an I, then the type there that you wanted me to return is system.in32. Uh -huh. So that bit of code that we saw is gonna return to system.in32. Uh, if we, there's a better, uh, depending on your settings, it may just return the keyword int. Uh, or um, depending on what's what's in the uh, the using clauses already, and it'll get you a nice short version of that. That's how that's all working. Yep. So that's under the covers. What we want to do is we want to essentially create a new list, and we want to use this same variable name called type here, right here. So I'm going to copy that to the clipboard. We're going to create a new variable group. The new variable group we're going to be call we're going to call this uh, the variable name. A uh, type, so we'll just paste that in there. The list name up here, we're going to call this like my MVC, something like that. Okay, mm -hmm. and for the comment, it's, it's going to be a, a, a list of types I use for MVC dev, like that. Now, cool. we could specify an optional context for now. I'm not going to leave that blank, and I'm going to click here. This list holds .NET types. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna type in uh, AR like that, and then I'm gonna come over here in the value, and I'm gonna give the full path to it. So just system.web.mvc.actionresult. Now that, just I'll just drag this over here so you can see this. Uh, I'm just going on to uh, MSDN here to get the, uh, the namespace for it, so we can see where it is. So there it is, system.web dot mvc and um, one of the things that we might do is we might go in here and we might say well wait let's see what other pieces we have inside of here that are interesting mm -hmm. for example we might say well you know what we like uh, the ajax helper maybe we want to create that so we just come down here we type in a whoops we type in ah over here and uh, we would come back in and uh, and we change this to the ajax helper Sure. And now we've created, whoops, let's get that spelled correctly. Now we've created two new template name variables. All we need to do is click OK. And now when we want to come in here and type in uh, a method that returns an action result, we just now type in MAR. And there it is. We're done. Notice it automatically added the reference to system.web.mvc right there. Nice. So it's pretty, uh, pretty good, pretty cool. So that's it. That's expanded a fair few things, though. I mean, although it may not make quite the sense uh, for this particular type, we can also produce properties that now use that type and exactly, um, you know, methods with parameters of that type, all, all the usual things that we've got. So again, all of those templates that come pre-built with Code Rush have now been expended, augmented, if you like. You can almost think of it as as a, an enumeration of useful types, although it is slightly more uh, useful than that in that you have the short form, which then expands to the large form. And what we've done here is to add kind of a partial enum to that pre-existing one. Yep, and that's exactly that's kind of exactly what's going on. So it's it's very fast and easy to add what you want to add to that. The last thing I'll show here that you can do is you can just specify that context that context if you want to. So we'll come back in here, grab our my MVC, and if you want, you can specify a context. So we can come in here, we can go, let's go into project and say, hey, if it's an MVC project, then make this list available, otherwise don't. And that allows us to use AH and AR for other things if we wanted to. So context could help us uh, restrict the usage for that. Sure. And that's it. Thanks very much, Mark, that's fantastic. So we'll see you next week for another Code Rush feature of the week. For more Feature of the Week videos, click one of the two video links on screen or select from our playlist. Download and learn more about Code Rush from the DevExpress website. And be sure to subscribe to our channel to receive all the latest Code Rush feature videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.